जय जय श्री श्री गुरु गौरंग गंधार विकगिरी धारी श्री श्री राधा विनोद बिहारी जो की जाए श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मरण मोहन जो की जाए नित्यल पवित्रम विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोसाई महाराज गुरुदेव की जाए नित्यल पवित्रम विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति वेदांत वामन गोसाई महाराज की जाए नित्यल पवित्रम विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभु पार की जाए नित्यल पवित्रम विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज की जाए नित्यल पवित्रम विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोसाई प्रभु पार की जाए नित्यल पवित्र महाभागवत शिल गौर किशोर बाबू जी महाराज की जाए नित्यल पवित्र शिल सच्चिदानंद भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाए नित्यल पवित्र वैष्णव सार्वभौम शिल जगन्नाथ दास बाबू जी महाराज की जाए श्री रूपान गौरी गुरु वर्ग की जाए श्री रूप सनातन भट्ट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट्टदास रघुनाथ शार्ड गोसाई प्रभु की जाए श्री स्वरूप दामदार राय रामानंदारी श्री गौर प्रसाद वृंद की जाए नाम अचय शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल व्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाए सर्व अभिष्ट पदार्थ गिरिराज महाराज की जाए श्री राधा कुंद श्याम कुंद की जाए श्री यमुन देवी गंग देवी की जाए श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाए श्री भक्ति देवी की जाए श्री पूनमासी योग माया की जाए श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए अनंत कुटि वैष्णा वृंद की जाए जाय श्री भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज Thiruvav Titi, which is coming up tomorrow, Ki Jai. <laughs> Shri uh, Kriti Ratna Param Gurudev, Shri Labhakti Vigyan Keshav Gosai Maharaj, Ki Jai. Shri Kartik Vrat Niyam Seva, Ki Jai. Shri Harinam, Shri Urjeshwari, Shri Vishabhanu Nandini, Shri Mati Radha Thakurani, Ki Jai. Shri Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Vo. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Hari Bo Rase Shri Mataji. And I see there are two other people watching, but I can't see your name because there needs to be a comment for it. Oh, Hare Krishna. Um, all right. So, yeah, today I thought to read, we could read from Kriti Ratna. Um, this it was a book that we published for the 50th Disappearance Day of um, Param Guru Dev Shila Bhakti Brigan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. And it has articles, uh, it has articles written by Shila Bhakti Brigan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, a bunch of letters written by him, um, and then words of tribute from his god brothers, from his aunt, Sarojavasani Devi, who is also his god sister, and also from um, Shila Bhaktivedanta Vaman Gosai Maharaj, Shila Bhakti, uh, Bhaktivedanta Chavikram Gosai Maharaj, and my Shila Gurudev, Shila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj. Um, just give me one second though. Uh, we ran out of gas and the gas person's here now, so I just need to give the money for that one second. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I had a difficult time finding the money. Hari Bo Kishore Prabhu. 
All right. So, um, let's. I'm going to share my screen, and then we can begin. Thanks for waiting for that. <laughs> okay, so Kriti Ratna, Jewel Among Guru Sevaks, published by Rays of the Harmonist of Gaudiya Vedanta Publications. Published by the inspiration of Nitya Lila Pravishta and Vishnupaj, Shishimad Bhakti Vedanta, Narayan Goswami Maharaj. So, what should we read from here? It would, I mean, I would like to go, I, I, as I mentioned before, I would like to start a series of just going through all these different biographies, all these different books glorifying our Guru Varga. And just, yeah, we could just go through them one by one. But I think because Kartik time, we should be reading from Dhamadar Ashtakam and like that. I'm not going to read this whole book just now. Maybe another time. But um, for now, we c we'll have two days of reading from this book. Um, just looking at the comments. Yeah, okay, so nobody has any preference right now. So let's... I, I made a really uh, like a good quality recording of this one, a true experience of separation. Um, it's an amazing article, um, but yeah, you can find a high quality one. Like I, I'd practice each line and then record myself saying it. Um, An invocation and separation is also really beautiful. Let's let's read this one, um, and then also pangs of separation from a disciple. That's also there's a very beautiful points in this one. So I'll read these two right now. And then those they're, they're both really short. And then we'll move on. Maybe we could look through different letters or we'll, we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> oh yeah, remember when we were reading um, A Life of Devotion, Srila Shula Bhakti uh, Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada wrote something for um, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj when he gave him that title. Oh God, I forgot what the title was. But anyways, um, Srila Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada also did the same thing for Param Gurudev. So they had like a, every year at Gaur Purnima time, after the, the Navadip Dham Pracharini Sabha, they would give out um, like, it's called the Gaur Ashirvad Patra. They're kind of like, I don't know what you'd say, rewards, trophies, <laughs> or, you know, like, um, no, that's not the right word. Anyways, you know, like like that for, um, for you know, p coupled sevaks or, you know, particular sevaks who did phenomenal service. So, on the second day of the 38th annual session of the Sri Navadip Dham Pracharini Sabha, it's 29 March 1932, 446 Gorabda, the chairman of the committee, Srila Prabhupada, being highly satisfied with the responsible service rendered by Sri Vinod Bihari Brahmachari, decorated him with the Gore Ashirvad Award, the blessings of Sri Gore, and he gave him the title Kriti Ratna, one who accomplishes jewel-like deeds. The certificate stated, I'm going to make all the texts of this book big. So, Sri Sri Mayapur Chandro Vijayatetamam. One second. Or maybe one one smaller there okay so um she she oh, she she navadip dam pracharinya sabhaya she she gora ashirvad patra patram the blessings of she god i'm not going to read the sanskrit but these are all sanskrit verses to serve she mahaprabhu he protects the the, the whole oh, sorry. To serve Sri Mahaprabhu, he protects the lands of the Holy Dham. He is expert in caring for its residents and has taken shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mat. His name is Sri Binod Bihari, esteemed among brahmacharis. He is a close confidant of Prabhupada and is endowed with all good qualities. The noble members of the Dham Pracharini Sabha take great delight in conferring unto him this decorative title, Kriti Ratna. At the glorious yoga pit, oh, at the glorious yoga pit, the most exalted place in Sri Navadip, situated on the eastern bank of the Ganga in Sri Mayapur Dham, during the auspicious occasion of Falguni Purnima, 
the day of Sri Gaur's advent in the Shaka year 1853, signed Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, chairman. And so that was one. Oh, um, uh, okay, it was um, Srila, Srila Bhakti Ramana Puri Goswami Maharaj's title was Pratnya Vidyalankar Pandit. And he also got Upadeshak, right? Um, and I think right here, my Param um, Param Gurudev also gets the title of Upadeshak. Um, so here's another one. Um, during the 40th annual session of the Sri Navadip Dham Pracharini Sabha, 1st March 1934, 448 Gorabda at 8.30 a.m. <laughs> in Sri Chaitanya Mat's temple room known as Avidya Haran, the usurper of ignorance, the chairman of the committee, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, after electing the acting committee members, after electing the acting committee members, awarded Sripad Vinod Bihari Brahmachari Kriti, Kriti Ratna Mahudai with the title Upadeshak, which means instructor. And then here's the certificate. He delivers himself wholeheartedly to the service of Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. He is of pure intellect, dedicated to spiritual principles exclusively attached to the path of truth, beloved of his guru, and Kriti Ratna Shrishta, the foremost jewel of accomplishers. The noble members of the Sri Dham Pracharini Sabha take great joy in conferring onto Sri Vinod Bihari, foremost of brahmacharis, the title Upadeshak. At the glorious spot of Yoga Pit, the most exalted place in Sri Navadip, situated on the eastern bank of the Ganga in Sri Mayapur Dam during the auspicious occasion of Falguni Purnima, the day of Sri Gaur's advent in the Shaka year 1853. Signed, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Chairman. Um, and Kishore, you're asking who wrote this? I mean, it's signed by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Maybe somebody in the Navadip Dam Pracharini Sabha wrote it and he approved it, or maybe he wrote it himself, or I don't know, but it's, yeah. All right, part one, Articles and Discourses by Shishimad Bhakti Brigan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. Okay, so this is, um, <clears throat> it's called the Viraha Mangalya. It's the, an editorial for the inaugural issue of Shi Gaudiya Patrika by Shishimad Bhakti Brigan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. And we'll see in the um, in the thing that Srila Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada wrote for this, he, he refers to this um, and also expresses his love for Narahari Seva Vigraha Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada says, Srila Bhakti Ranta Swami Prabhupada says that the pain that I feel from Narahari Seva Vigraha Prabhu is no less than the pain I feel for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada. And um, yeah, so let's read. Oh, Haribo Mahi Bharat Prabhu, and Dandavat Pranams Prabhu, and Ganga Mataji, and Vidya Lala Sadidi, and everybody else watching. Haribo. Okay, Viraha Mangalya, an invocation and separation, an editorial for the inaugural issue of Sri Gaudiya Patrika by Shishimad Bhakti Brigan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. Today, amidst profuse joy and elation, all that has been awakening within me are the pangs of grief. Although I have been trying to conceal these painful emotions within my heart, my heavy sighs betray me, revealing my pain to the outside world. That burden's breath tumbles and heaves restlessly and has now become the sounds of words. These words are the very form of weeping. This language is either completely indistinct or partially indistinct as the throat chokes up and the voice falters. Still, I believe that only when this concealed pain of separation is professed and exposed will it subside even slightly. But even bearing this in mind, today, as I set out to write the torment I feel by not being able to see Shishi Guru Par Parma, or Thakur Srila Narahari Seva Vigraha Prabhu, who is devoted solely to, to serving him. Um, this mingles my pain. 
sorry. So the torment I feel by not having darshan of these two personalities mingles with my pen, causing it to falter at every step and proceed so slowly across the page. He who has even attracted the all-attractive Lord, Sri Krishna, and made him a captive within his heart. He who has overpowered all-powerful Bhagavan with, with endearment, and who can therefore deliver him to the hearts of others as he pleases. He who has gathered all the qualities of Sri Hari, proving the deceived condition of the Nirguna Brahmavadis, who believe that the absolute reality is ultimately devoid of personal qualities, that Sri Gurupad Parma, Srila Prabhupada, advented at the site of, of Purushottam Kshetra, Sri Puridham, as the spiritual master of the entire universe to unfold and fulfill the deepest message of Sri Chaitanya and Sri Vyasa. I am an addict of gross pleasures. My nature is heinously untamable, and I am a fallen wretch. And yet, he firmly grabs me by the hair on my head and drags me into his shelter, allowing me to be a particle of dust on the soles of his sacred lotus feet. His compassion surpasses even God's compassion. That she sorry about the background noise. That she Guru Parma, the greatest of all exalted souls, he who is indeed the ideal model within the clan of Paramahamsas, concealed the glory of his true identity from the world out of humility, and instead introduced himself as Om Vishnupad Shishimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur. The residents of this world address him with utmost respect as Srila Prabhupada. He has not just captivated all the residents of India, but the entire world with the brilliance of his scholarship. When the great thinkers of distant Western countries beheld his visionary philosophical genius, they became astounded and fell at his feet. The adherents of opposing schools of thought who, who know that his logical refutations of their doctrines are as severe as bolts of lightning remain perpetually terrorized. <laughs> the immovable, impenetrable expanse of his philosophical conclusions regarding service to Adhokshaj, who exists beyond sense perception, has forced the peaks of towering snow-capped mountains to bow to him in veneration. Today, Many people are tormented by the anguish of separation that arose because he has concealed himself from us. His form, shining with the most captivating, supramundane effulgence, has embarrassed all worldly beauty. In refuting philosophies that are opposed to the conclusive truth, his heart seems to be harder than a yeah, in refuting philosophies that are opposed to, to conclusive truth, his heart seemed to be harder than stone. Yet his heart would become overwhelmed with joy whenever he saw someone performing even a very small service with excellence. He is the prime embodiment of that wonderful quality of Vaishnavas, summed up by the words, A Vaishnav considers even the most insignificant service we render to be great and becomes at once indebted to us. Indeed, whenever he saw us render even the most insignificant service, he would heap praises upon us. And whenever he saw us make even the smallest mistake, he would shower nectar-like rebukes upon us, which were always pregnant with meaningful instruction. Sri Chaitanya, Ma uh, Sri Chaitanya Mat is the original Gaudiya Mat. It is the king of all of Srila Prabhupada's other Mats and the most beloved by him. Upon obtaining his most intimate and trusted servant, Sri Narahari, uh, Narahari Brahmachari Seva Vigraha Prabhu, who is supremely worshipful for all, Srila Prabhupada entrusted him with the entire burden of service to Sri Chaitanya Mat. Rid of worrying about the Mat and in great ecstasy, he was able to preach in far off, in far off lands without the slightest hesitation. Today I realize that since the company of such a vile, 
fallen wretch's eye is thoroughly poisonous. They have abandoned me and gone to a place where even getting any news of them is extremely difficult. O oh, Narahari Da, you are known to everyone as Thakur Mahashaya. Just by uttering your beautiful, most auspicious name, we are all reminded of the constancy, the constancy with which you performed your service. You personally embody Srila Prabhupada's beloved Sri Chaitanya Mat. There's a footnote here. It says, According to passages from several Gaudiya articles, we derive the, th the following three revelations. Okay, let's, I'm making this bigger so you can see it. Okay. So this is in reference to um, Narahari Seva Vigraha Prabhu. You personally embody Srila Prabhupada's beloved Sri Chaitanya Mahat. So according, yeah. One, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada names the original Mat Sri Chaitanya Mat because it is the birthplace of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus non different from the Absolute Godhead. Two, the purpose of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance and thus the purport of Sri Chaitanya Mat is to revive the original Krishna consciousness or Krishna Chaitanya of the living entities. And thus, and thus reinstate them in their roles of eternal loving service. 3. It is only possible for the living entities to regain their original position through the association and guidance of those whose Krishna consciousness is eternally awakened. In other words, the transcendental residents of the eternally existing Sri Chaitanya Mat, such as Sri Narahari Seva, Vi Seva Vigraha Prabhu. That's from the Gaudiya articles. Okay, so O oh, Narahari Seva Vigraha Prabhu, um, as long as we were in your company, oh, sorry, O oh, Narahari Da, you are known to everyone as Thakur Mahashaya. Just by uttering your beautiful, most auspicious name, we are all reminded of the constancy with which you performed your service. You personally embody Srila Prabhupada's beloved Sri Chaitanya Mat. As long as we were in your, in your company, we felt as if we were truly living in Sri Chaitanya Mat. You have shown the way to ideal service through your unperturbed and supremely blissful self, your Akroda Paramananda Swarup. And striving for that ideal has become the sole aim of Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti. Please see me as I try to serve your beloved Sri Gaudiya Patrika and shower your kind grace upon me. And even if I ever, oh sorry, and if I ever commit any offense, please reprimand me. Just as there is a want of exemplary personalities to reprimand me when I make mistakes in my services, there is similarly a dearth of those who will express great joy when they see my small efforts to serve and encourage me um, congruously. O oh, oh, Srila Thakur Mahashai, O oh, Srila Prabhupada, the two of you are the sole captains of my spiritual life. Even though you both remain forever immersed in the bliss of your most exalted services within the apical realm of the spiritual domain, please remember this fallen wretch and bestow profuse blessings upon me. Again and again, I beg you, please bestow profuse blessings upon me Please bestow profuse blessings upon me. Today, this prayer, full of anguish, is my only supplication at your lotus-like feet. O oh, Srila Prabhupada, you called your beloved magazines Vaikuntha Vartavaha, carriers of the Vaikuntha message. They carried all the divine messages that your prede predecessor Acharyas transmitted to you in this mortal world. Today, Please convey a message to me from your supremely exalted place within the spiritual world so that I can publish it and make the name Vaikuntha, Vartava, Vaikuntha Vartavaha successful. For the magazine, I now begin. So that was translated 
from Sri Gaudiya Patrika, Year 1, Issue 1, Gaur Purnima, 14 March 1949. Okay, and so then next comes this beautiful article, which, as I mentioned before, I made a um, recording for, um, A True Experience of Separation. You can find a recording of this on Vine of Devotion, the website, and also on um, the, the YouTube channel, Vine of Devotion um, YouTube channel. So I'm going to skip this. And um, now there's this other very beautiful um there's one sentence in this article that's like one of my favorite sentences <laughs> like one of my favorite quotes um this one pangs of separation from a disciple oh Hare krishna um shubhananda prabhu haribo <laughs> and nri hari prabhu and pavatarani mataji Hare krishna oh, okay you couldn't get on zoom because the internet's frozen Okay. Okay. Pangs of separation from a disciple. A speech given a speech given by Shishimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Gosai Maharaj. Why is it not letting me Okay. Okay, on, on 22nd October, 1966, Monday, the day of Akadashi, Srimad Bhaktivedanta Bhikshu Maharaj immersed us in the pangs of separation and departed for his destined holy abode. Sheltered at the feet of Paramaradhatama Shri Srila Acharya Dev, Shri Srimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Srimad Bhikshu Maharaj was a competent proponent of Shri Gauriyavedanta Samiti and an assistant editor of Sri Bhagavat Patrika. On 3rd November 1966, Thursday, the fifth day of the waning moon, Krishna Panchami, a festival was held in Sri Keshavji Goriamat Mathura in remembrance of the dearly departed Srimad Bhakti Bhaktivedanta Bhikshu Maharaj. That day, the most worshipful Sri Srila Acharya Dev presided over a memorial assembly in that gathering, after eulogies were delivered by Tridandi Swami Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, Tridandi Swami Bhakti Kushal Narasingha Maharaj, and, Tridan and Tridandi Swami Srimad Bhakti Prakash Aranya Maharaj, Srila Acharya Dev gave a brief speech that touched the core of everyone's heart. His eyes brimming with tears, he wept as his voice choked with grief. Hearing him, Everyone in the assembly also broke into sobs. It was as if the pangs of separation had arrived there in person. The gist of Srila Acharya Dev's eulogy is as follows. I have no experience of the sorrow a mother and father feel at the loss of their child, as I have been a celibate brahmachari since birth. But I am truly acquainted, but I am fully acquainted with pangs of separation from a disciple. Following the departures of Sriman Jagabandhu, Srimad Sriman Ananga Mohan, and Sriman Govardhan, I am again mourning a disciple for the fourth time. Bhikshu Maharaja's Guru Nishta was unfathomable and idyllic and it will prove to be the primary aid in the attainment of his cherished goal. This quote, this quote is just one of the most hopeful things ever. Let's, I'm highlighting this. Even if a sadhak suffers from every sort of fault, Guru Nishta alone is capable of granting him entrance into the kingdom of Paramartha, which is the greatest wealth, Prem. In the absence of Guru Nishta, however, all good qualities combined cannot help a sadhak reach the realm of Paramartha. As such, Guru Nishta is the cornerstone in the attainment of divine love for Krishna.
Let's just, because this is such an important point, let's just reread this one more time. Even if a sadhak suffers from every sort of fault, Guru Nishta alone is capable of granting him the entrance into the kingdom of Paramartha, the greatest wealth, Prem. In the absence of Guru Nishta, however, all good qualities combined cannot help a sadhak reach the realm of Paramartha. As such, Guru Nishta is the cornerstone in the attainment of divine love for Krishna. Bhikshu Maharaj had this sort of Guru Nishta. He spent his life serving the divine message and in the end, continuously thinking of his service and serving Sri Chaitanya's message, he departed to the realm beyond. Such a life is blessed, is blessed. He had gone to Delhi to arrange for paper to print a Jaiva Dharma in Hindi, the famous book on Dharma penned by the crown gem of Vaishnav teachers, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and getting paper for Sri Bhagavat Patrika, the, the magazine, Hindi magazine. Just as he returned here to Madhupuri, to Mathura, the birthplace of Krishna, Sri Madhusudan Hari bound his servant in the ropes of his embrace to keep, to keep near him forever. His efforts in service, his Guru Nishta, and his eagerness to perform bhajan will remain an inspiration for those inquisitive about the process of bhajan, as well as for other servants of Sri Guru. Translated from Sri Bhagavat Patrika, Year 12, Issues 6 to 7. Hare Krishna Vangsi Wala Prabhu and Krishna Mai Didi. Hare Krishna. Okay. Um, maybe we can sing this tomorrow. Uh, we'll sing the Radha Binod Bihari Tattvashtakam tomorrow. Um, and now we will sing. Now we will go. This is very nice articles and discourses by Srila Bhakti Brigham Keshav Goswami Maharaj. These are, um, wait, this is supposed to say letters. <laughs> Anyways, that's a mistake. Maybe let's just like read some, some, uh, just a few letters, and then we can move on to glorifications of Shiloh Bhakti Vigyan Kesha Gosayamash. So this is a letter written from Udharan Goriamat Chunchura in 1949. I wonder if this is when Shiloh Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosayamash was in Chunchura. Might be. I have, to, I have to see the dates in that book again. Shishi Guru Gorango Jayata. Affectionate greetings. And all, for some reason, in all the letter books um, in Bengali, they always redact every name everywhere. I don't know why they do that. But anyhow, affectionate greetings. Blink. I received your letter dated 6 11 49 yesterday after returning home from Ayodhya and Naimisharanya. When I read your letter, it struck me that you are a very learned person and eligible to read our magazine. I certainly, I certainly think we need to meet and talk in person. I have not had the time to visit your area for quite some time. This year, a group of travelers from blank, <laughs> the, the place was redacted, and nearby very enthusiastically requested me to visit your area. With luck, I will be able to visit there this year. I hope at that time to address all your questions together in person. It is not always possible to fully address all the details of a subject like this in a letter. Even so, I submit one or two considerations regarding diksha, spiritual initiation, and upasana, devotional practice below. The word diksha indicates divine knowledge. Scholars refer to the rite by which sin is completely eradicated and transcendental wisdom aroused as diksha. So diksha is that which complete, which sin is completely eradicated and transcendental wisdom is roused. That's diksha. The ritual aspect of that initiation is not considered diksha proper, but the inception or commencement of diksha. 
Okay, so the ritual aspect of that initiation is just the inception, the commencement of Diksha. It's not actually Diksha itself. Of course, in some cases, we see that transcendental wisdom arises as soon as one receives the Diksha mantras from one's Gurudev. In those instances, ceremonial Diksha is real Diksha. We, however, are not so fortunate. And so, in our case, it is only ceremonial. After receiving Diksha, one adopts various practices according to the counsel and principles that Guru Parparma imparts. These activities are referred to as Upasana. The word Upasana does not refer to any sort of enterprise, any kind of karma or pursuit of knowledge, any kind of jnana. Upasana is, char is characteristically eternal, so to presume it refers to anything besides bhakti is not valid. To explain why karma and jnana are not upasana requires addressing a number of topics. A close, review of, a close review of the Vedanta canon, the Upanishads, and other similar texts yields numerous references of the word upasana. But any interpretation other than bhakti fails to concur with scripture. The wise will not trust that a conclusion is reliable. The wise will not trust that a conclusion is reliable if it does not concur with scripture. That said, please consider the, this verse, which addresses the subject of diksha. Divya jnanam yato dadyat kuryat papa sesangshayam tasmar dikshetti sa prokta deshikais tattva kovida. That's from the Vishnu Yamala Purana. Because it bestows transcendental perception, sambandha jnan, and destroys sin at the root, those who are learned and knowledgeable in Bhagavat Tattva refer to this rite as diksha. And there's a footnote for the word sin here. It says, sin here refers to sin itself, pap, the desire seed of sin, pap bij, and ignorance, avidya. So it destroys the sin, the sin itself, the seed, the desire seed of sin, and ignorance. And it bestows transcendental perception, sambandha jnana. Please also contemplate this verse from Brahma Tarka relating to Upasana. Mukta api hi kurvanti svechaya upasanam hare. Even souls who attain liberation perform upasana of Sri Hari of their own accord. What more is there to say? We can discuss matters further in person. I conclude here. A servant of Sri Gaur's devotees, Sri Bhakti Brigan Keshav. And it was published, this was published in Gaudiya Patrika, Year 25, Issue 5. Okay, Letter 2, In Cordial Opposition to Mayavad. And it's been a couple, a couple years since I've read these, so I don't really remember these all, them all. A Firm Stance on Education. This is a neat art. This is neat. He was... Um, let's read this, this because I... I, I Okay, so a firm stance on education. Pichalda is a small town in the, in the Medinipur district that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited on his way to Sri Jagannath Puri. After repeated requests by the village residents, Srila Bhakti Brigham Keshav Goswami Maharaj established Sriman Mahaprabhu's Padapit, an altar with the imprint of Sriman Mahaprabhu's feet. He established, yeah, Padapit there, as well as Sri Pichalda Godiamat. Later, the villagers wanted to open a primary school. For this, they formed a school board which they duly registered, but they needed a hall to run the school. On 23 December 1958, they sent a written request to Srila Bhakti Brigyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, who at that time was in Sri Keshavji Goryamat Mathura, asking him to donate the old house of the Padapit for the use as a school. The following letter is his response. Okay, so this is from Acharya Kesari Shishimad Bhakti Brigham Keshav Goswami Maharaj. The friend of the book. Okay. So Keshavji Goriyamat, Kangsatila Mathura, 23-12-1958. December 1958. My dear, and the name's been redacted, Prabhu. Oh wait, one second, I'm just looking at Kishore's comment. 
Let's see. Can we read the letter Nityananda and Radharani after this? Um, can you tell me which letter that is? Because I don't remember Nityananda and Radharani. Ahari Vol Pajumna Prabhu and Mantra Murti Mataji. <laughs> okay. So, my dear Blink Prabhu, I have received a signed petition from, se for some, from some residents of your village requesting that I register the old building that houses the Padapit in the school board's name. I have no objection to handing it over to the school board, but there are a few points I want to address. One, Sri Gauri Viranta Samiti has not the slightest faith in the education provided by today's universities. I do not accept education that is opposed to Sriman Mahaprabhu to be education. <coughs> Two, I am not prepared to bid farewell to religious teachings for the sake of a few rupees. Three, Pichalda has been sanctified by the touch of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. The villagers are therefore to be taught in such a way that they pass their life in faithful allegiance to the service of Sriman Mahaprabhu. 4. The Pichalda Padapit is not a godless monument, and Vedanta Sumiti will not approve teaching atheism on its premises. 5. I have no objection to transforming the deed if the school board is willing to fully entrust the students to Vedanta Sumiti's oversight. 6. The villagers are likely to remember the essay titled Achinta Beda Bed that we published in Sri Sri Gaudiya Patrika's 10th issue, severely reproaching the activities of Kolkata University. Srivas translated all these articles. It's actually, this was a series of 24 articles, um, and, like published over two years. And if you go to bigdrum.us, Srivas, you can find the articles translated by Srivas. Bigdrum.us. Seven, in Sri Mayapur, I established a high school. Although it was accredited by the university, it violated university statuses by prioritizing religious education. I'm not fully aware of the current situation of that school, but I recommend adopting its original model. Eight, it is impossible for a country to benefit from unprincipled students. Religious principles are the most important. 9. So many Christian missionary schools have survived in our country. If the government recognizes them, then surely the Pichalda school can also maintain a strong religious curriculum and still receive authorization. There is nothing to fear in this regard. Ten. The individual who donated the land and house for the service of the Pichalda Padapit is no longer alive. We have to consider whether or not we should do something that conflicts with his wishes and intent. When I was in Pichalda, the donor's son came crying to me one night, saying, have you, forg have you forgone my father's donation? Will you not fulfill his wishes? Seeing his distress, I instantly told him I would never let go of what I had received. I still remember how delighted his son was to hear me say that. Everything we do must therefore be as the deceased donor would have wanted. That is to say, no interference with Sri Gaudiya Samiti's spiritual priorities will be allowed. 11. That house was offered to aid Vedanta Samiti's preaching efforts. Vedanta Samiti supports the establishment of a college, school, or Sanskrit academy in that house for the sake of education. However, a committee approved by the Samiti will manage the said school. No atheistic ideology of the education department will be permitted in any part of the school's syllabus. 12. Hiranyakashipu sent his son Pralad Maharaj to school to learn from Shanda and Amarka. Shukracharya was in charge of the education system there. Pralad Maharaj, in total violation of the orders of his father, the emperor, and, and of the headmaster, Shukracharya, gave precedence to the teachings of devotion to Vishnu. This is our ideal when it comes to promoting education. 13. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the context of a conversation with Sri Rai Ramananda, Sriman Mahaprabhu provides the souls of this world specific instruction on education, 
which is the only criterion we deem acceptable. Any other model of education is likely to be demoniac, and we will refuse to accept it. 14. At the school in Sri Mayapur, instead of following the Saturday and Sunday school holidays mandated by the university, we instituted holidays on Akadashi and Panchami. When local Christians and Muslims lodged complaints about this, the university's departmental inspector came and issued me an injunction stating we would stop receiving government aid if we did not close the school on Saturdays and Sundays. I responded by saying, as an, as an adherent to Sanatan Dharma, I have no obligation to observe the Christian Sabbath day, Sunday. You can withdraw your financial support if you want. Although the university did withdraw funding, Thakur Bhaktivinoda Institute in Sri Mayapur is still running today and is still recognized by the government. <laughs> See how heavy that is? There is no way he was going to budge on observing the Christian Sabbath day, Sunday, um, like closing school on Sunday and Saturday. No, only on Akadashi and Panchami. Will school be closed? 15. Please read my letter to the village residents and be sure to deter, and be sure to deter them from rushing into anything. I have established and managed other schools, academies, and colleges, so I have a lot of experience in this area. There is nothing to be so concerned about. There is no need to register and hand over the land right now. We are not at, we are not at all obliged to follow Congress, the Congress uh, legal regulations, Congress, Congress's legal regulations. Many people of an independent country are not, able, are not to be subjugated. We must set up the school there in an impeccable manner, such that it becomes a leading institution of learning in the whole Medinipur district. Please explain this to everyone. I have, much, I have much to add to this. We will discuss matters in person. I will be returning to Bengal via Assam at the end of Mag. I conclude here. Your eternal well-wisher, Sri Bhakti Pragyan Keshav. That was published in Gaudiya Patrika, Year 10, Issue 12. <laughs> okay, this is what you're talking about. The next article. Okay. Haribo, Surevi Didi. Letter four. Can Sri Nityananda and Shimati Radharani be on the same altar? So this is um, written from Sri Udharan Goriamat, um, Chowmata Chunchura, Hooghly, in 1960. 31 January 1960. My prostrated obeisances at the feet of the Vaishnavas. Um, blank Maharaj. I'm just saying blank when the name is redacted. I received your letter dated 25-12-59 on time. I wanted to come to your place for Vyas Puja this year, as I did not last year. But I am doubtful whether or not I can do so. I have not received any specific invitation for Vyas Puja from anywhere else. I cannot say what will end up happening. In regard to your question, Shima Nityananda Prabhu is none other than Sri Baladev. In other words, Nityananda is covertly a form of, Bal of Baladev. Nityananda Prabhu has a special role in the divine pastimes that precludes him from sharing the same altar as Radharani. Okay, so Nityananda Prabhu should never be on the same altar as Radharani because that would be Rasabhas. Rasabhas, yeah. Rama, Nrsingha, Varaha, and so on are plenary portions. They are Anksha, or portions of plenary portions. They are Kala of Krishna himself. They are not Anksha's and Kala's of Baladev's tattva. In this case, we have to keep in mind the intricacies of the divine pastimes. Through the Shaligram Shila, the invocation, the Pran Pratishta of both Shakti Potency and Shaktiman, the potent within the deity, takes place. Isn't that fascinating? This is a really important point. It's, so, look at this. <laughs> Through the Shaligram Shila, 
the invocation, the pran patishta of both shakti, the potency, and shaktiman, the potent, within the diti, takes place. So it's almost like Shaligram Shila is like what gives life to Takraji on the altar. It's like there. Hence, Shaligram Shila is entitled to preside everywhere as the worshipful deity, as the archarup. It's the, the form that's worshipped. To be specific, he is Narayan himself, Lakshmipati, the husband of Lakshmi Devi. Shimati Radharani is known as Lakshmi, Mahalakshmi, Sarva Lakshmi Mai, and so on. Thus, in placing Shaligram Shila on the same altar as Shimati Radharani, the fault of Rasa Abhas, clashing Rasas, is not incurred. I, I heard something interesting once that um, actually on, um, let me know if anybody, like Kishore, if you've heard anything on this or if anybody else has heard anything on this, you can let me know. But that in temple, in, in, on altars, the Radha Krishna deities are not actually, uh, like, for the public, they aren't actually Radha Krishna, but Radha Rani is more of like a manifestation of, of like, it's more like Lakshmi. Um, no, that's not, oh God, I, I don't know exactly how it's mentioned, but like, I, I'm not getting exactly right, but it's not, or maybe it's Radha and Krishna, like, in the other chamber of Goloka that's like where they're married, you know, like Swakya Radha Krishna, uh, which is like f full of opulence. I think there's even more opulence there than in Dwarka. Um, and the reason for that is because Radha and Krishna, they would, they <laughs> like in, in Goloka Vraj, in Vraj Dham, Radha and Krishna are very, sorry, like within, you know, Vrindavan, sweet Madhur Vrindavan. Radha and Krishna will never be together in public. They, they, they only meet together very secretly. And so, um, so, but for our benefits to give us mercy, then they, they stand together, but it's not, yeah. I don't know, has anybody heard anything on that? I didn't really say that very clearly, but. Um, I mean, there's a letter by Srila Prabhupada where he's saying that Mm, we're worshiping like the worship of Radha and Krishna is like of the deities is like that of Lakshmi Narayan because we're not yet qualified to worship Radha and Krishna and like conjugal Madhur Ras even wrote it in a uh, Srimad Bhagavatam purport that we read a couple years ago oh wow I said so long ago I forgot about that wow that's but, um yeah Okay, confirmation from Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, because I, I remember the, the, the time I first heard it was um, like in, I was in Keshavji Gaudiyamat and Madan, he did the Shringar and he didn't put a peacock on, on Krishna. And so I was like, why is there no peacock feather on Krishna? And I, I mean, I still think he was wrong to not put a peacock feather on Krishna. But then he's like, he's like, it's not Radha and Krishna anyways, it's Lakshmi Narayan or something like that. And he's like, this is what our Guru Varga has said and blah, blah, blah. And so then... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I personally would have still put a peacock feather. Definitely, I I think he was fully wrong there, and also I don't think, and also, I definitely I think there's some speciality between you know Radha Krishna vigrahas and Lakshmi Narayan vigrahas. Like we don't put <laughs> Lakshmi Narayan on our altars, so like, but but um, anyway, so it's a it's a more nuanced topic I think, but um, yeah. Generally, it's it's basically it's not. Uh... I mean, when I see the deities of Radha Krishna, I still think of Brajanagar and Vrishabhanu Nandini. Yeah, no, no, and that's that's there are Ishtadevs, there are Gol, and so I think I think that's definitely, of course. And I mean, even Mahaprabhu, when he saw Jagannath Dev, he saw him as what is it? Tumi Shakshat Brajanda Nandan. He saw him directly as, even though it was Jagannath is Krishna in Dwarka, but Mahaprabhu saw him as. Um, directly Rajendra Nandan Krishna. So, yeah, it's a it's a nuanced topic. I don't I don't think we can just have like any, uh, but but yeah. Okay, so even though the deities of Nityananda Prabhu, Baladev, and Lakshman are Vishnu Tattva of the same essence as Vishnu, they cannot always be positioned together with other deities due to their role and pastimes and the intricacies of Ras. When there's, yeah, that makes sense. Like, 
Anyways, okay. Where there is a chance of the fault of rasa bas occurring, they are to remain separate. The fault of rasa bas is not incurred when Lakshman, as Ramachandra's younger brother, is situated along his elder brother's wife, as he is her brother-in-law and a recipient of her affection. If there is anything more you wish to know or inquire about, write me back. I conclude here, servant of Sri Gaur's devotees, Sri Bhakti Bhagyan Keshav. Hare Krishna Rajbhuvan Yadavji. Okay, on fortitude in the face of adversity. I don't, I, it's been a while since I've read these, so I can't remember what the contents are, and of course we don't have time to read all of them, so. Anyways, uh, let's read this one, letter six. Fight, fondi, fight, <laughs> fight folding, <laughs> fault finding results from apathy to service. This is a great letter, I remember this one. This is written from Sri Devananda Goriamat, Te Gauri Pada, Navadip Nadia, um, 17, what comes before September? <laughs> God, it's so bad. Um, anyway, 1708, 1960. My dear uh, name is redacted. I'm going to say blank when the name's redacted. My dear blank, I believe that you, blank and blank, have been spreading unjust propaganda in opposition of blank. I will dismantle this propaganda. He is a trustee of the Mott. I will leave the full weight of responsibility for the Mott to the trustees. None of you are capable of taking on this burden. To leave, respon sorry, to leave responsibility for the mutt in the hands of a bad-tempered person is foolishness. I will not entertain this. The mutt is a place for devotees, not irritable non-devotees. Upon my inquiry, Blank Das has told me everything that the three of you have said about the mutt. Sitting, idle, say, sitting around idly in the mot and not engaging in service spawns all manner of gossip and criticism. This is why everyone is to observe a vow of collecting alms, bhiksha, on a daily basis. Everybody needs to be busy, <laughs> busily engaged. Otherwise, if you're just sitting around um, not engaging in service, this will spawn all kind of gossip and criticism. So everyone must engage. Observe a vow of collecting alms, bhiksha on a daily basis. Lack of engagement and service degrades a person's consciousness. How can someone accustomed to wasting time progress? There's an English saying, a vacant mind is the devil's workshop. When a person's mind is not focused on a particular service, it becomes degraded and filled with devilish thoughts. For, that, for this reason, Mahaprabhu has, has said, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Only if one serves Hari, sorry, only if one serves Hari will one remain absorbed in thoughts of Hari. Hence the injunction to chant the name of Hari at every moment. Chanting Hari's name and serving Hari are one and the same. On seeing this state of affairs, I resolved to send everyone out preaching. If they do so, they will be engaged in Hari Kirtan and will collect alms as beggars should. Otherwise, nothing auspicious will come to pass. Four or five days ago, a young man came to stay in the mat, but I did not accept him. There is no need for a person to stay in the mat if he is not serving Hari and if he's just uselessly passing his days and eating and sleeping. Let the body be engaged in service to Hari. Read this letter to all others and direct them in such a way that they will be absorbed in service to Hari. I conclude here, your ever well-wisher, Sri Bhakti Pragyan Keshav. Oh, that is a great letter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Bhakti is beyond nationalism. I'm going to skip this one. Instructions. Oh, I like this one. Instructions for married Vaishnavas. This one's very fascinating. Okay. Actually, um, 
actually in in the original um in the original article that was published no sorry when it was published this whole section was taken out but then we found the original we found it and and it was in, and so then we we could, were able to translate it it says my dear um blink diligence in observing rules and regulations is itself a primary means to enter the domain of bhagavan therefore the two of you husband and wife should coll so this sentence was taken out it was just it's, it had dot 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 but then we found the original therefore the two of you husband and wife should collectively chant a total of one lakh for example my dear daughter-in-law can chant 40,000 names and you 60,000 in this way you will daily complete the chanting of 100,000 names between you isn't that so cool <laughs> so <clears throat> well, that's for chanting one lakh um, but yeah so you can sp a husband and wife can split up their rounds between them but I don't think you'd approve for doing that for 16 rounds <laughs> maybe 32 rounds I don't know <laughs> Hare Krishna. Oh, and I'm just seeing um, Kishore shared the. I, I, sorry, I didn't see this before. Kishore shared the quotes regarding the whole Lakshmi Narayan thing. Um, he, he, it says, Radha, Srila Prabhupada says um, in Srimad Bhagavatam 4, Canto 4, Chapter 24, verses 45 to 46, the purport. Srila Prabhupada says, Radha Krishna cannot be approached by the neophyte devotees. Therefore, temple worship according to regulative principles is offered to Lakshmi Narayan. Although there may be a Radha Krishna Vigraha, or form, the worship of neophyte devotees is, accepted, is acceptable as Lakshmi Narayan worship. So that's, that's an important point also. It also depends on the worshipper. Like, so when, when our Srila Gurudev is, you know, worshipping the Vigraha, I don't, I don't think he's worshipping Lakshmi Narayan, it really depends and Mahaprabhu, he saw Jagannath as Shakshat Vajendra Nandan so it, it depends on the worshipper also that's a very good consideration but to the public they manifest as Lakshmi Narayan and then to, according to the level of devotees for extremely rasik, advanced devotees then they will manifest themselves as Radha Krishna okay okay, so in this way, you should daily complete the chanting of 100,000 names between you. If you have farmland, then you can plow and cultivate it yourselves. Vaishnavas are not restricted in this regard. Agriculture is more virtuous than commerce. Commerce necessitates bending the truth. There is hardly, any, there is hardly a need for untruth in agriculture. Therefore, agriculture is the best livelihood for householder Vaishnavas. A householder is forbidden to beg. Um, on Thursday, um, oh, um, on 3rd November 1960, on the full moon day, you are to conclude your vows and shave your head. Kartik Rat began yesterday, Tuesday, 4th October. This falls within Chaturmasya. From this full moon until 3rd November, do not take sesame or mustard oil. You can use peanut, peanut oil or ghee. Do not consume salt that is extracted from the earth. Sol, salt sold by a Brahmin during the month of Kartik is considered non-vegetarian. So random. Okay. Don't buy salt from a Brahmin during the month of Kartik. <laughs> Do not take citron or pomelo in the month of Kartik. These can be taken during any, uh, any other months. I don't even know what those are. What's citron and pom pomelo? Citron is a shrubby Asian tree that bears large fruits similar to lemons, but with flesh that is less acid and peels that are thicker and more fragrant. Okay, so no citron then. And what's pomelo? Pomelo is the largest of the citrus fruits with a thick yellow skin and bitter pulp which resembles grapefruit in, it resembles grapefruit in flavor. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> it was not proper for you to take prasad cooked by someone who is who is a Vaishnav in name only. It is not an easy thing to be a pure Vaishnav. A Vaishnav who has received initiation 
but not received the sacred thread cannot be called a pure Vaishnav. Also, do not take cooked foods from a person simply because he has taken birth in a Brahmin family or introduces himself as Goswami. You may only accept fruits and roots from such persons. Those not born in Brahman families but initiated into a Vishnu mantra attain the status of Brahmanas. Those who do not accept this are not Vaishnavas. Never take food cooked by them. If they are not under the guidance of a Gaudiyamat, even if their conduct is pure or if they introduce themselves as Vaishnavas or Brahmanas, you should not accept foodstuffs from them. Pan, a betel nut, induces indulgence. Bhagavan may partake of such items, but it is not proper for any conditioned soul to consume them. If your mother or uh, sorry, if your mother or mother-in-law observes a pure standard of conduct, or if after bathing she offers you some dry foodstuffs, you may accept it in an emergency; otherwise, not. You should always respect your mother who born who bore you in her womb. But if she is not vegetarian, you cannot offer the deities anything she has touched. If she bathes and washes her hands and feet properly, she can cut up the fruits or vegetables, and you can wash them thoroughly, cook the vegetables, and offer the vegetables and fruits to the deities. There is nothing wrong with offering respects to your mother by touching, and there is nothing wrong with offering respects to your mother by touching her feet. Separate sleeping arrangements are best. Asat sangatyag, a Vaishnava sadachar. Abandoning improper association constitutes the proper conduct of a Vaishnav. However, if you fall into unavoidable difficulty, what can you do? All rules and regulations can be adjusted in times of emergency or grave danger. To save one's life, one may receive medicine and a diet from any person. Of course, adhering to the rules and regulations is the most auspicious thing you can do. I conclude here. Your eternal well-wisher, Sri Bhakti Pragyant Keshav, from Sri Gaudiya Patrika, Year 28, Issue 2. Hmm. Param Gurudev is very strict, huh? <laughs> okay. Now, let's move on. There's a lot, I think there was three or four places where he, ta where he spoke about agriculture and farming. He was a very, very... Um, I'm not going to... Actually, I'll read this whole thing. Why not? Okay, so, on agriculture and farming. From Sri Udharan Goriamat, uh, Chunchura, 8-10-1960. My dear blank, I have been trying to publish an article on farming and agriculture for Vaishnavs in the Ashvin Kartik issue of Sri Gaudiya Patrika. Oh, it'd be nice to find that article. With some guidance from me, Vaishnavas in many places have begun farming according to scriptural provision. There is nothing wrong with the Vaishnavas in your area starting to farm as well. Those who consider farming to be somehow inappropriate for Vaishnavas and forcefully stop them from doing it are hypocrites and rogues. Such people do not even know what it means to be a Vaishnav or what Vaishnav Dharma is. Thus, they cannot become pure teachers of Vaishnav Dharma and are not to be accepted within such ranks. Popular opinion has nothing to do with truth. They are not the same thing. Those who perform bhajan of Bhagavan are not entangled in the opinions of the general populace. This is a self-evident fact. I conclude here with blessings, Sri Bhaktivedanta Keshav, um, published in Gaudiya Patrika, year 40, 42, issue 7. Okay, let's read this one. Speak the truth fearlessly. Shri Shri Guru Goranga Jayata Shri Keshav Ji Goriamat Kangsa Tila Mathura 23-11-1960 My dear blank, I received your letter dated 17 October as well as your, late, as, as well as your letter dated 14-11-60. Both letters give me particular delight as it is the teachings of scripture that will enlighten us. Swayam Bhagavan Sri Gorsundar has said, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Always perform, oh, sorry. 
um, always perform kirtan of the names of Shri Hari. Scripture states, Kalo tad hari kirtanat. Whatever is attained in other yugas by other processes is easily available in the age of Kali solely by chanting the name of Shri Hari. The purport is that only by the by the persistent cultivation of Shri Hari Kirtan and Hari Kata are all conditioned souls freed from bondage. That is, they become liberated and eligible to serve Bhagavan. It is a matter of great delight to me that you engage at every opportunity in the discourse of Hari Kata and performance of Kirtan with everyone. Speak Hari Kata fearlessly. There is not a word of Sriman Mahaprabhu's teachings that is unscriptural, illogical, or unfounded. All other preachers, so-called religious orders and preceptors, however, they have propagated and continue to propagate irrational opinions that are more or less concocted and contrary to the conclusions of the scriptures in order to gain repute in present-day society. It is crucial to speak the truth fearlessly. Bhagavan is not for those who are faint of heart, Oh, sorry. It is crucial to speak the truth fearlessly. Bhagavan is not for those who are faint at heart. The Upanishad state, Nayam Atma Balahinena Labhya. Self realization cannot be attained by weakness. Craven individuals manipulate spiritual dialogue by claiming, All is well, all is well, it's all good. <laughs> this only serves to reveal their frailty in the process of bhajan. You must vehemently oppose this. If necessary, I am ready to appear in an open assembly to debate these matters. <laughs> this is really Acharya Kesari, the lion-like Acharya. <laughs> Ask those who want to claim that Nirvishesh Brahma, that the featureless aspect of the Absolute Truth, is Paratattva, the highest truth. If, if, yeah, so ask them, um, why we find the word Parabrahma mentioned in so many places in scripture? If, if, if the Lord is Nirvishesh Brahma. Why does it say Pada Brahma everywhere? Pada Brahma implies something greater than Brahma. It points to the supreme principle. Brahma, therefore, is not Pada Tattva. I will discuss this point with you in person. So there's Nirvishesh Brahma, um, fe the featureless ab um, Brahma, and there's Pada Brahma, which means the superior Brahma. Pada means superior. Brahma Gyan is the negative aspect. The positive aspect is Bhagavad Gyan. A negative idea has no value. Sri Krishna, the speaker of Gita, is himself the origin of Brahma. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. I am the, or the origin and shelter of Brahma. That's Bhagavad Gita 1427. You can explain this statement thoroughly. The word Vishnu is from the Vedas. Brahmanas utter only Vishnu's names when sipping Achman water. Demons become fearful upon hearing the very name of Vishnu. There is not enough room to write everything in a letter. If one, uh, if one is to enter family life, there is, a necessity, there is a necessity for knowledge that can facilitate the acquisition of wealth. <laughs> spiritual, knowledge, spiritual knowledge, however, surpasses all else and heralds all auspiciousness. I conclude here, your eternal well-wisher, Shri Bhakti Brigyan Keshav. Okay. We follow the Vaishnav Mahajans, not the Smartas. That will be a good one for Pradumna Prabhu here. Because he said that in the temple that he's at, there's lots of Smarta practices that they do there. Even though it's a temple under Shri like. Satsanga is more important than accumulating wealth. Hmm, let's read this one. I wasn't planning on going through all these letters today, but it's, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm having a really good time. Kishore, why is salt not veg if bought by a Brahmin during Kartik? I have absolutely no idea. That was very random to me. Like, I, yeah, I have nothing to say on that. <laughs> okay. Um, Sat Sangha is more important than accumulating wealth. This is written in Devananda Gaudiyamat, Tegari, Te, Tegari Para, Navadip, um, 4-8-1961. My dear blank, 
I was particularly disheartened by your letter. Money is not the main medium with which to serve Sri Hari. Artha, wealth, is the root of anartha, that which has new value. Obstacles, right? Artha is the root of anartha. We see the word artha and anartha. Wealth used in gratifying one's own senses is anartha. Wealth, wealth that is, sorry, wealth that is or that can be utilized in the service of Hari, however, is not anartha, but paramartha. It is the supreme prosperity. Is Blank Maharaj asking you for money for some purpose other than the service of Hari? If that is the case, then you should not offer him any financial support. You wrote that you want to use the money you have accumulated or are accumulating in the service of Hari. This is a fine idea, but should an immediate opportunity to serve arise, your duty is to fo focus your mind on that service then and there. The future of conditioned souls is mostly obscured by darkness. Therefore, do not leave saintly company to go live separately somewhere else. If you live separately, Maya will attack you. It is not proper to entertain materialistic activities simply to save a bit of money. Consult with Blank Maharaj and somehow or other figure out a way to live in the Mat again. Let me know by letter what you have decided. When your good mother took Harinam, she told me that if she started having difficulty cooking for herself while living on her own, she would live with you in the railway quarter. It seems to me her body has recovered and she is healthy. Now she is not experiencing any inconvenience. If she still lives with you, it will not be convenient for your bhajan. You will have less time to serve Hari. I have written a letter to Blank Maharaj as well. The two of you should cooperate and work together to run the mat. Address your letters to me in Navadi. I conclude here. Your eternal well wisher, Sri Bhakti Brigan Keshav. Oh, this is a great point. The Shiksha Guru is to, be, it is to make one attached to one's Diksha Guru. There are a few quotes on this topic, but this one is a really strong one also. Okay, let's read this one. This is so relevant for devotees. Okay, Shri Udharan Goryamat um, Chaumata Chunchura Hugli. Um, 5-11-1961 Please accept my regards. I received a letter from you some days earlier. Blank is, is well at present and engaged in regular service. He appears to be much better than before. Hopefully this behavior will, will last. Still the scriptures on ethics, the Niti Shastras state, Avyavastita chittasya prasado hi bhayankara. What seems promising early on may prove to raise fearsome havoc in the future. That being said, as long as one remains enthusiastic in Hari Seva by hearing Hari Kata, things will be auspicious for him. You have endeavored, you have endeavored greatly for his well-being and are continuing to do so. This is also, this is also auspicious for you. Both one's own well-being and that of others are imperative. Moreover, the two are reciprocal. Okay, this is it. Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru are one in tattva. What you wrote is correct. He who gives instruction on service to Guru is called the Shiksha Guru. Not just any person who quotes scriptures can be called Shiksha Guru. The duty of the Shiksha Guru is to fix one's attachment to the lotus feet of one's Diksha Guru. If one's Shiksha Guru creates discord with one's Diksha Guru, he ceases to be Dik uh, Shiksha Guru. Therefore, Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru are accepted to be categorically identical. Only their pastimes and activities distinguish them from one another. This must be understood. Okay, let me, let's just reread these, these two sentences here. The duty of the Shiksha Guru is to fix one's attachment to the lotus feet of one's Diksha Guru. If one's Shiksha Guru creates discord with one's Diksha Guru, he ceases to be Shiksha Guru. Therefore, Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru are accepted to be categorically identical. Only their pastimes and activities distinguish them from one another. 
This must be understood. On the path of Archan, Diksha Guru must be worshipped first, not Shiksha Guru. If Shiksha Guru is more powerful than one's Diksha Guru, one must offer obeisances to both of them simultaneously. If Shiksha Guru is extremely powerful, then he can deliver his disciples from all offenses and give them a place at the lotus feet of Krishna. This is why he is known as Bhajan Guru. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has categorized Guru as follows. The first Guru is the Vartma Pradarshak Guru, who introduces one to, to the spiritual path. The second is the Nam Guru, who imparts the holy name. The third is the Diksha Guru, who bestows the Diksha Mantras. The fourth is the Shiksha Guru, who gives spiritual instruction. And the fifth is the Bhajan Guru, who guides one in Bhajan. This sequence illustrates the prominence of Bhajan Guru in Archan Mark. But Diksha, Guru can do, but Diksha Guru can do all these activities. He can be one's Shiksha Guru and one's Bhajan Guru and Nam Guru and Vartma Pradarsha Guru. <laughs> Diksha Guru, Guru can do all these activities. If a Diksha Guru is not qualified to give instruction and guidance in Bhajan, then we accept the prominence of Bhajan Guru. The main point is that we have to reach the lotus feet of Sri Krishna somehow or other. That's an interesting point, huh? The main point is that we have to reach the lotus feet of Sri Krishna somehow or other. Bring lots of people with you for this year's Purikrama. I conclude here, servant of Sri Gaur's devotees, Sri Bhakti Pragyan Keshav. Okay, let's read this one also. What time is it? It's 8.23. Okay, we still have a good amount of time. Bhagavan, oops, Bhagavan personally aids those who have the courage to speak the truth. Sri Devananda Gaudiyamat, Te Ghari Pada, Navadvip, 27, December 1961. My dear Blank, I was so very delighted to receive your postcard dated 23.12, 1961. You managed to fit 80 lines on a single card. <laughs> Bob Grid have counted them. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, those postcards are tiny also, if you've seen them. They're really small. You will have to be in college for a long one and a half years to get your degree. I am thinking about you too, every day, and I keep remembering one of Nartam Thakur's songs. He wrote, Ramachandra Sangamage Narotamadas. Narutam Das begs for the company of Ramachandra. The Lord's will prevails in all matters. Always remember that. We are, the, uh, we are the way he has made us. No one has the ability to work against the Lord's wishes. Whatever happens, make a concerted effort to achieve high grades in your exams. A Vaishnava's heart is the playground of all good qualities. <laughs> As such, all the virtues of this earthly realm, including knowledge and scientific genius, dwell within the Vaishnavas. Through scientific knowledge, one is considered to be a de of demoniac origin. The demigods are by no means deficient in it. Pass with good marks and come. You must swear, you must swear to always preach the truth. Bhagavan personally aids those who have the courage to speak the truth. We will not be the slaves to a world veering down the path of falsehood. We were not born to indulge sinful proclivities and falsehood. We will not encourage in the slightest the demoniac education offered in modern universities. We must stop the world's demise resulting from the forces of Kali. People who want what is truly auspicious for the world need to solemnly vow to do so. Those with such spirit can earn the name Mahavadanya, great benefactors. What they, what they do is true altruism, Jibe Doya. Speak the truth fearlessly. For the sake of, uh, for the sake of preaching the truth, Nityananda Prabhu, Haridas Thakur, and many other Vaishnavas were assaulted by the inimical. Many great personalities have even had to give up their lives for the sake of truth. 
As such, it will not become us to be fearful. Mahaprabhu's policy is to have mercy on all living beings and to preach, becoming humbler than a blade of grass and more tolerant than a tree. Preaching the glories of the Lord is true altruism. What more can I say? My health is what it is. I am going to Mathura on 4 one uh, 4th January 1962. I conclude here. Servant of the devotees of Sri Gaur, Sri Bhakti Bhagyan Keshav. Published in Gaudiya Patrika, year 42, issue 2. Oh, God. Param Guru Day, man. So, I love it. Anyways. Um, ah, we're out of time. Look at look at these look at the topics of these letters though. No adversity must stop our harikata. Bhakti is not for the weak, timid, and cowardly. <laughs> uh, perform bruts with devotion. Oh, that this will be nice to read tomorrow. Perform bruts with devotion because tomorrow's um, begin, beginning kartik brat. I mean, many of you have already started kartik brat on akadashi. Surrender your attachment to Bhagavan. Unconditional charity. Yes, don't become a slaves of, of donors. Observing Akadashi, Ratriyatra, etc. on the correct day. Um, the word Vigyan. Abandon the company of those who have deviated from the conduct and ideology of Srila Prabhupada. For a servant of Hari, trials and tribulations are a source of auspiciousness. Oh, I, I should send this to a friend who's going through a difficult time right now. Solitary practice is opposed to Hari Bhajan and leads to sense gratification. Only eat, oh sorry, eat only what you cook and offer. Reinstallation of the deity. That's an interesting topic. The mat cannot be, uh, the not cannot, uh, sorry, the mat cannot uh, be under the control of the general public. Preachers are educators of the public and therefore need to set an example. Householder devotees are to be cremated rather than interred. Do not, yeah, that, that's an interesting topic. Anyways, um, we'll, we'll get there. Do not donate in such a way that it puts you into hardship. It is impossible to progress in life if one does not heed discipline. Follow the precepts and conduct of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Knowledge is one thing, and title is another. The Vaishnav's consideration of impurity. The duties of Sri Hari's devotees in a demoniac society. Encouraging a childhood friend in Hari Bhajan. Oh, I think, yeah. Oh, he wrote this letter in English. Yeah. <laughs> The Smarta's misconception about Ashochya and purity. So we'll read all these. Maybe not tomorrow, because tomorrow is the day. It'd be nice to read glories about Param Gurudev, but maybe the day after tomorrow we can continue reading these letters. Tenacity in maintaining, a, uh, tenacity in maintaining Vaishnav standards. The necessity of a constitution to bring discipline to the Mat. In opposition to those proclaiming themselves to be Bhagavan. Specific instructions on managing a spiritual institution. Yukta Vairagya, holistic renunciation. Okay, so we'll read um, all these. Um, well, not all of them, but we'll read uh, different letters uh, the day after tomorrow. And tomorrow, we will read some words of tribute from disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, so from his god brothers. And then, yeah, maybe we could read about Param Guru in the next few days. All right, so. Time is up. It is 8.30, so uh, we'll end with a kirtan and then continue our reading tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Nitai Gaur, Hare Bol, Nitai Gaur, Hare Bol, Hare Bol, 
Sure, what do you like to do, Rajadwani? Yeah, Hari Radha Vinod Bihari Ju, Radha Nayanav Ju, Radha Raman Bihari Radha Marva, Shishi Mahapuru, Radha Vinod Bihari Lada Ji Ki Jai, Sri Govinda Gubinath Manan Mohan Ju Ki Jai, Sri Sachinanan Gaur Hari Shri Shri Radha Damodar Ju Ki Jai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Vishnu Par, Paramaham Savri, Rajakachari, Varia, Astotrash, the Shishman, Bhakti Vigan, Shilab Hariti Gosami, Guru Maharaj Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Umbishnu Par, Paramaham Savri, Rajakachari, Varia, Astotrash, the Shishman, Bhakti Gran, the Shalanara, and Gosami Maharaj, Paripavan Guru Dev Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Umbishnu Par, Astotrash, the Shishman, Bhakti Balapir, the Gosami Maharaj Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Vishnupar, a store, Trusta Shishaman, Bakti Brand, the Shilabaman, Gosam, Maharaj Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Vishnupar, a store, Trusta Shishaman, Bakti Brand, Shilat Vikram, Gosam, Maharaj Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Vishnupar, a store, Trusta Shishaman, Bakti Brand, the Swami, Gosam, Maharaj Shri, a pro party Kijai. Jaina Tele, a provision of Vishnupar, a store, Trusta Shishaman, Bakti Data, Maharaj Gosami. Jai Jai Natya Lela Pravishta Um Vishnapar Astotrashta Shri Shri Mar Bhakti Pragyan Shila Keshu Goswami Maharaj Param Guru Deva Chari Keshri Gijai Jagat Guru Kriti Ratna Shishimad Bhakti Pragyan Keshu Goswami Maharaj Shila Param Guru Deva Chari Keshri Gijai Jai Shila Param Guru Deva Gijai Jai Natya Lela Pravishta Um Vishnapar Astotrashta Shri Shri Mar Jagat Guru Shri Varishavana Vidaita Das Shila Bhakti Sadhanta Sarasari Goshami Thakur Prabhupar Kijai. So Abrikar Shila Prabhupar Bhakti Sadhanta Sarasari Goshami Thakur Kijai. Yatya Lela Pravishta Um Vishnapar Mahaparam Bhagavar Parvar Paramahamsa Ashtotrashta Shishamar Gaur Kishaw Das Bhavashi Maharaj Kijai. Yatya Lela Pravishta Um Vishnapar Saptam Goswami Ashtotrashta Shishamar Sachidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Mahashai Kijai. Jai Natya Lela Pravishta Um Vishnapar Vaishnav Sarvoma Ashtotrashta Shishma Jaganadas Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Sarya Kandavas Yusirha Shilamadu Surandas Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Su Urvadas Udarandas ki jai. Urvadan Acharya Shishmaar Balire Vribhushan Prabhu ki jai. Mahamahupadadiyaya Raskrishyanumani Shala Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakurupar ki jai. Shala Rishikananda Murari Prabhu ki jai. Sri Sri La Ramachandra Kaviraj ki jai. Sri Lo Chandas Thakur ki jai. Sri La Narotam Shiniva Shamanand Prabhu Trai ki jai. Sri Sri La Krishna Das Kaviraj Goshami Prabhu ki jai. Yes Savadar Arkavishala Brindavan Das Thakur ki jai. Sri Ashta Kaviraj Vasudajan Vanityananda Durishukupala Shri Chaushati Mahand ki jai. Jai Sri Rup Shri Sanantan Bhatta Raghunath, Shri Jeeva Gopal Bhatta Das Raghunath, Shri Goshami Prabhu ki jai. Shri Sarup Dhamdar Rai Ramananda Lokanath Garva Adi Gaur Parishar Vrind ki jai. Nama Acharya Shri Sri Lahari Ras Thakur ki jai. Rem Saiko Hoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gradha Shiva Sri Gaur Bhatta Vrind ki jai. Shila Ishwar Puriga Sami Pariki Jai. Shila Marvindra Puriga Sami Pariki Jai. Sri Andra Deep Mayapuri Siman Deep Godram Deep Madhya Deep Golu Deep Ritu Deep Janu Deep Madra Drama Deep Ritra Deep Makashi Nabri Dham Kijai. Sri Eka Chakra Dham Kijai. Sri Shantipur Dham Kijai. Shri Gaur Chandra Bhagavan Kijai. Swayam Bhagavan Shri Gaur Sundar Kijai. Shri Shri Gaur Garad Hurki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Gopi Kapago Girgopan Vrishad Banat Maka Shri Braj Mandodham Kijai Shri Radha Kunda Sham Kunda Ganga Saki Yamana Saki Tulesi Bhakti Devi Kijai Ujay Shri Brajay Shri Brishaban Nandini Shri Mati Radharani Thakurani Kijai Sri Lalita Vishaka Chitra Champakalata Tungavidya Indaleka Rangadevi Sudevi Adi Sakya Vrinda Kijai Shri Ananka Prema Majalali Shri Rupalamanga Raga Vila Sagunadati Kasturi Kamala Nayanamani Adi Manjari Vrinda Kijai 
श्रीमती वृंद देवी की जाय श्री भगवती पूर्णमा शिवगमाय देवी की जाय श्री गोपेश्वर श्री शिव महादेव की जाय राधा परन कित राम श्री वृंदावन की जाय जय श्री जगन्नाथ बलिदेव सुभद्रा सुदर्शन चक्र नीलमार जीव की जाय श्री जगन्नाथ परि पुरुषोत्तम क्षत्र मंडल नीलाक्षाम की जाय सर्वा विक्रम निरशन करे भक्त विक्रम विनाश सुरेंद्र सिंह देव की जाय भक्तराज भक्त परवर श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की जाय सुप्रला लक्ष्मीन्द्र सिंह की जाय श्री हरि राम हरि संवरदाय हरि चारि की जाय श्री मद्वार मनोज विष्णु स्वामी नंबरित्य हरि चारि की जाय आक्रमतरा श्री चैतन्य मार की जाय श्री गौर्यमार वृंद की जाय रंतरा श्री मार भगवतम भगवीता चैतन्य चरिताम वृत्त चैतन्य भगवत जैव धर्म अरे सर्व गौर्य वैष्णव ग्रंथ वृंद की जाय श्री भुवन मंगल श्री हरिनाम प्रभु की जाय श्री भुवन मंगल कल खेर प्रेम दान श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन युग धर्म की जाय श्री भुवन मंगल धन्य कलयुग तर्क ब्रह्म श्री हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम नम नाम हरे हरे महामंत्र की जाय श्री आनंद गुरु वैष्णव वृंद की जाय श्री समगत गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय जगत गुरु प्रीति रत्न नित्य लील प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णु पार अष्टोत्र श्री श्रीमान भक्ति प्रज्ञान शिल केशव गोस्वामी महाराज परम गुरुदेव चार के श्री देव की जाय श्री निताय घोर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि वो वृंदाय तुलसी देवाय प्रियाय केशवाशा कृष्ण भक्ति प्रद देवी सत्यवताय नमो नम पंचाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य Hari Vol, everybody. So, I just now I'm seeing uh, Nuri Hari Babu's comment here that uh, you had a problem getting into the Zoom class because it was stuck on the the last Zoom room that we had the the glories of Krishna the reading for Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. I completely <laughs> forgot because usually before each class I just copy and paste the Zoom link from before, but um, and it, the, the Zoom link stays the same our, for our reading every day. I, um, this this morning reading is the same Zoom link; it never changes. But I had to make a separate Zoom link for the Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, and I accidentally copied that link. So um sorry about that. I was wondering why only Kishore was here and everybody else that usually joins on Zoom was all on YouTube and Facebook. But now I know. Um yeah. All right. Oh, and he said are we going to sing Dhammarashtakam? We'll we'll start singing Dhammarashtakam every day from tomorrow if you don't mind. Um yeah. I know Kishore is definitely singing it today sometime. <laughs> but um probably already sang it. But uh yeah. All right. So, um yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Done the pranams. Kishore Prabhu and let's see who else. Raseshwari Mataji, Ganga Mataji, Vidya Lala Sadidi, Mahi Bharat Prabhu, done the pranams Mahi Bharat Prabhu and um Shubhananda Prabhu, uh, Nri Hari Prabhu, Bhavatarini Mataji, uh Vangsi Wala Prabhu, Krishna Krishna Mai Didi, uh Prajumna Prabhu, Mantra Murti Mataji, Sudevi Didi, Raj Bhuvan Yadav Ji. and everybody else watching dandavat pranams so see you all tomorrow for the most glorious occasion of shila bhakti brigan keshav goswami maharaj param guru dev's auspicious disappearance day it's also the disappearance day is it murari gupta is it i can't remember murari gupta it's the first day for those who start kartik and purnima it's the first day of kartik um and also the ras yatra of shishi radha govinda so um and the big big beginning of urja vrat shri kartik vrat niyam seva so i'll see you all tomorrow for that and we'll read many different things about param gurudev all different words of tributes from his god brothers and disciples um wait what's the question kishor how many years now of param gurudev i don't fully understand the question like what what number of um the disappearance is it uh more uh, like appearance like is it like the 130th no, or something no it's 125th um 125th really last year 
So last year. Parum Gurudev was one year older than Srila Bhakti Rabhapuri Gosai Maharaj. I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. The 126th yeah. Vyas Puja of Srila Parum Gurudev. Yeah, but that will be coming. His Vyas Puja is later, right? His Vyas Puja is around the same time as Srila Bhakti oh. Vyas Puja. It's the day before, I think, or like one day before or two days before Srila Bhakti Saranta Sarasati Thakur's Vyas Puja. All right. So, yeah, it's the disappearance day. And for the disappearance, I think it might be like the 54th, 55th, 56th, something like that. Disappearance. Because that, that, that Kriti Ratna article we put out for the 50th disappearance. And that was on the first day of Kartik. We did that book really quickly. Well, Srivas translated it all. And then, yeah, we, we had to do all the preparation. We did it in like just a couple months, that whole book. All right, so we'll continue reading from this wonderful book tomorrow. And yeah, see you all then. And we'll begin our Kartik Rat program. I'm going to send, I think I'm going to, I'm going to try to write something, send it out on the Gaudiya Kirtan mailing list and Vine of Devotion mailing list today. Just, just um, mentioning what the Kartik program will be for this. Yeah. All right. Howdy ball, everybody. Just checking the comments. Um, oh, and Nuri Haribo says, since 1968. Yes. That was disappearance here. Yeah. Okay. Haribo. Thank you so much. Nuri Haribo. Dandabat pranams, everybody. Ending now. Where is the there? <laughs>